Bear Bets is back, week three of the National Football League. Mr. Bear Felica, Jeff Schwartz here to talk about the upcoming slate in the in the NFL. All we can say about last week is it happened. <laughs> and it's over. And things will improve from here on out. But that was that was the perfect example of what we've talked about where the Bears, maybe you were in a position to win, maybe you were in a position to push, but you certainly should not have been in a position to lose. And that's ultimately what you did. The Broncos should have been a no-brainer. You're up 21-3 to at home against Sam Howell and a game that you must win. And somehow the rest of the way, you allow them to look like the 91 or 92 Redskins with those offenses and – Give them three on this three three scoring drives. They had yeah. third down penalties that gave the uh, they, they gave Washington the Commanders. I should say a uh, uh, a first down and the non call on the PI in the end zone. So yeah, it happened and uh, we always own it. And it was not a good week, but here's to a good week now. We will have a better week this week. It also goes to show you sometimes you know getting the best of the number. It can really hurt you if you don't do it. I, I had Packers on this show, money line. It was plus three on Sunday, plus yep. three covered. Money line did not, obviously. So it's important as you guys shop for numbers this week. Uh, you have to gauge where the market's going to, but to understand that try to get the best number you can get at, 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 at any given time. There was some really odd line moves, and that 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 Atlanta Green Baby game was certainly one of them. And I, I think obviously the injury news with Bakhtiari and some of the other players and Jones being yeah. probably caused. Cause that line to totally flip on you. The NFL feels funky this year, doesn't it? There is a lot of two and O teams, zero and two teams, just a lot of funkiness through two weeks, right? Like it's, it's hard to gauge where the NFL is at right now. Other than I think Miami is a powerhouse and Niners are a powerhouse. And then it's just like Cowboys, I think are good, but Cowboys have played really nobody, right? I mean, giants and, and, and they put a Jesse without Wilson, without Rogers. If I gave you the Cowboys, the chiefs and the Niners, Versus the field to win the Super Bowl, what way would you go right now? I would probably take the Cowboys Chiefs Niners. I, I mean, that's I, what I. The Chiefs offensively have been poor. Like la- last Sunday was their worst offensive game. I think efficiency was under Patrick Mahomes, and they started the second half was better. They kind of got under control. They'll be fine offensively. They've had patches over the years where they've been poor offensively, but the Chiefs defense has been really good. Yes, and if their defense can be even just. Not even this good, but just a little bit less good, like 10th in the NFL efficiency or 10th in total yards or 10th, whatever you want to, uh, metric you want to use. They're going to win the Super Bowl. That's just what they're going to do. Uh, the Cowboys, they're really playing good football. The question with them is just they're the Cowboys, right? Is McCarthy going to be able to do this in the playoffs? And Niners, I think Brock Purdy's answering my question, which is can they win with Brock Purdy? I think the answer is yes. The rest of the NFL, the Eagles, I, I think, are good, but they look a little off. And Sirianni's talked about it, right? Like, they're not quite as good offensively. Maybe that's the loss of, of Shane Steichen to uh, to the Colts. And, and he mentioned lack of preseason reps as well. But you look at, you know, is Miami going to win the Super Bowl? Defense. I, I don't know. They've um, gotten after the quarterback, but. Yeah. And then I like I like the Bengals start the season. They were my pick in the AFC to win. To win. I think I expect them to, to win the Super Bowl. And, and, and But Joe Burrow's not healthy right now. Right. So maybe they get it. Maybe they get him a couple of weeks here where he rehabs and comes back. But again, now you're going to play a bunch of road playoff games. Oh, and two in the divisions. Yeah, they're not going to the division probably now, right? And and so now you're going to have road playoff games. You have to win multiple road playoff games, which they can do. They're a good enough team. Sure, so they did, they did it the year they got the Super Bowl. Yeah. So it does feel like this is a, a tougher road for some of the other teams that we thought were going to be. The Chargers are bad. We'll talk about that in, in, in the game with group chat as well. Um, it's a interesting first two weeks, Bear. Well, let's get to your wagers this week. We have a better week, everyone. These are the wagers that Bear is actually making, right? This is the a good part of our show. We, we make these wedges. We talk about these wedges all week long, and Bear does make these. So let's get to the first NFL game here. It is the Titans at the Browns. The Browns are favored by three and a half here, three in the hook. Total is 39 and a half. The Titans are one and one, but they covered both their games. Browns are one and one. We saw an unfortunate loss of their running back, Nick Chubb, against the Steelers. The Steelers did not score. Offensive points in the fourth quarter at negative yards and won that game against the the, the, the Browns. Who you got, Baron, in your first game? I, I think it's a it's a good opportunity here to, to buy a little low on the Browns at three and a half. I, I think you'll probably see a majority of the people uh, be skeptical uh, about Cleveland uh, coming not having Chubb. But at the same time, they did everything but win that game Monday night. I mean, just a couple of terrible 
turnovers, allowing Pittsburgh to score non-offensive touchdowns. The Browns' defense is still one of the best defenses in the league. I think they're going to wreak havoc on Ryan Tannehill, something that he did not experience uh, in their win last week uh, against the Chargers, against the Saints. Obviously, they were under a little bit more pressure and couldn't couldn't find the end zone. So I think after what we saw Monday night, I think this is a good chance to come home. You get a team that shouldn't really threaten you offensively. And, and I ultimately, Deshaun has to be better. Uh, and I don't know if it's fair to say he will be at this point, but you'd have to assume that maybe the turnovers won't happen. Yeah. But I, I think that defense alone for Cleveland is, is, is enough for me to uh, decide with the Browns here, and I'll lay the three and a half. This line opened four and a half, so you get an extra point here off Good. of what we saw on, on Monday Night Football from the Browns. The thing that's always tough is that, that, that's something that we were talking about yesterday with, with Sammy P in, in the group chat about how 13 and a half to 14 and a half is kind of a, is a big deal. You don't want to kind of st- sit yourself in the middle where you're laying 14 and a half and taking 13 and, yeah. and slides on 14. It's kind of the same thing here. You don't want to, now you're in a position where if you're laying four and a half, you lose on four, now the number comes down. And you're in a better position. It's a much better number. You know, four, three is a key number. So is four now with all the two point conversions yep. and different ways. The thing that always that always gets me is is I feel like I I always lose a wager betting against the Titans because the way they play defense and just the thing. But your point about their offense, they had five field goals in week one. The Chargers did not present them any trouble. The Browns defense is, is really good. Yes. And if Watson can just be a tad bit better. And I'm curious about the run game. Ford came in for Chubb and had that seven yard touchdown right. immediately. The key, the key's going to be like a lot of times you'll see backups come in and they can do it for 10, 12 carries. Like the thing is, you're not going to expect Ford to do that on 22 carries. Like they're going to they're going to need Hunt or but someone. The offensive line is good though. Your offensive, your favorite player in the league, right? Tell her. Uh, Why Teller is my favorite player in the league? That is correct. Uh, their offensive line is good. Though. Like they they could they might be okay. Without Chubb, I know it's it's hard to say that because he's so good. Yeah. But we've seen year after year saying. when guys sometimes get hurt, the run game is fine. I mean, Christian McCaffrey left the Panthers last season in a trade, and the Panthers run game got better, right? So it's not going to be the same, but I think they can they, they, they can get by. I think it's a good spot to buy low here in the Browns. Let's get to your game number two here: the Buffalo Bills at the Washington Commanders. Commanders are plus six and a half totals, forty three and a half. The Bills are one and one. We saw them lose to the Jets on Monday Football. They went back and dominated the Raiders. They were down seven nothing though, one thirty eight ten. Commander surprising two and zero. They covered both of their games. They were dogs in in uh, in, the, in uh, the game against the Broncos and ended up winning that game. Yeah, they were. And I, look, give the Commanders all the credit in the world for coming back from twenty one three down. The enemy called a great game. Sam Howell executed a great game. The Browns, the the, the, the Broncos were more than willing to help them out uh, when when they needed a third down conversion or or a turnover or. Yeah, <laughs> in, inability to get inability to get the Washington offense off the field. Yep. So, but maybe this is a two and and0 team. It's maybe a little try. Maybe it's one of those years where, and maybe, maybe there's a little good karma in the air where Daniel Snyder, no longer the owner of the, uh, the franchise, maybe, maybe maybe things have turned a corner and it's, it's all it's all going to all going to go there with this year. But I think that defense is very aggressive. They can get after the quarterback. We know Josh Allen is very turnover yeah. prone. Four turnovers against the Jets on the in, the, in that primetime game. And in in and look, I, I think now everyone, I think just to speak, oh, Bills, Bills are fine. The back blew out the blew out the um the Ra- the Raiders, Raiders last yeah. week. I don't know. I don't know if I want to lay close to a touchdown with them on the road. I, I think Washington might be the right. I think they had a really good chance of winning this game outright and get to 3 0. It's worth pointing out for Buffalo the last couple of years that they either win a game by a lot of points or lose the game. There's no in between. They don't play a lot of close games that they win. And so if you like the commanders here, taking them on the money line might be something you would consider doing. Because again, the the way that they can rush the passer and the way they're able to, um, you know, to maybe affect Josh Allen here. And then offensively, the Bills still don't have a pass rush. And if you no. don't hit Sam Howell, we've seen them be able to complete the ball when in the pocket. I mean, look at their games last year. They won by 21. They won by over 30. They lost by two. Then they won actually a close game by three. Then they won by 35. Like they, 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 they don't win a lot of close games. They either blow teams right. out or they lose close. So maybe a little sprinkle on the Washington. On the- Washington, you can get 250, 255 on the money line yeah. right now. It's pretty good. Might be interesting. 
Let's get to another game here. This game's in Florida. Eagles fair by four and a half at Tampa Bay. Total is 46 here. We know Eagles off a 2-0 start. They got a long rest. They put on Thursday night against the Vikings. Bucks are 2-0. No one saw this coming. They had beaten the Vikings as uh, on the road as uh, big underdogs. They beat the Bears in that weird game we saw on Sunday. They covered that as well. So they're 2-0 against the spread. Yeah, this is an, a line that looks eerily low at, at four and a half. Uh, I'm going to bite, which is something that normally doesn't happen. When I, when I see a line that kind of looks strange, I usually tend to go in the direction of the, of the strangeness or stay away. But I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to lay the points here with the Eagles. I, I think the D, Eagles defense is the best unit on the field, and you hit on it. The, the, the Bucks won a turnover fest from the Vikings in Minnesota week one despite being out box scored and everything else. Yes. You, you, you beat the Bears, who are – in the running for worst team in the league last week. And now, look, I, I, I am not on the Eagles long-term this year. I just talked to you about the, the three teams that I thought versus the field that I would yeah. take. But <laughs> the Bucks, Bucks really going to – I mean, actually, I actually shouldn't even say win the game, even if they lose by three or four. Yeah. They're, they're fine. But I think that Eagles defense is, is, is legit. I think they're going to give Tampa a ton of problems here. And – if I lose, I lose, and knowing 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 the people that I've spoken to, that, who I respect, that like Tampa in this game, yeah. going against them makes me feel a little hesitant. But I just have to go with what I've seen on the field, and nothing that I've seen from Tampa suggests that they should be playing Philadelphia within a touchdown. That's the hard part about the handicap in this game, right? And we see this all the way all, often in the NFL: is that the it's a fishy line. You're like four and a half doesn't make sense. Sharp people are on four and a half, but the football tells you the Eagles should win this game by a good amount, right? I mean, where are the Eagles better than Tampa Bay? The, I mean, where are the Tampa Bay better than the Eagles? Nowhere. The answer is nowhere. The Eagles are off a rest, right? A couple extra days of rest because they played the Vikings a couple Thursday nights ago. Um, and I'm, I, I think the Eagles win this game by a couple touchdowns. And at four and a half, you're, obviously that gives you a big margin of error there if you think they're going to win by a lot. Uh, so I'm with you here. It, it does feels a little squarish, I guess, but sometimes those square plays are the right place. Yeah, I like this, the, the, the squarest parlay, up, money line parlay of it all. 49ers from last night. Who knows? Maybe we're still alive. Maybe we're not. <laughs> Along with uh, with Cowboys, Dallas, yeah. Dallas and, and Kansas City. Yep. Hey, man, money is money. All right, Bear, let's recap the three wagers you have. So far, before we get to Gamma Group Chat and your best bet later in the show, you have the Browns Laying three and a half, the favorite by three and a half, hosting the Titans. You have the Commanders at home getting six and a half points against the Bills. And you have the Eagles laying the four and a half on the road at Tampa Bay. Three wagers for Bear so far. Let's get to our gambling group chat. It's going to be me, the Bear, Sammy, Will Hill. We'll talk about futures we like after two weeks of the NFL season. We'll talk about the games we don't want no part of, the games we do want a part of. We'll do that all of that. Stay tuned for gambling group chat. All right, guys, Gambling Group Chat is back. Myself, Sammy P., Will Hill, Jeff Schwartz. I hate the NFL. I hate everything about it. I hate Justin Fields. I hate the Bears. I hate the Broncos. I hate Russell Wilson. I hate Sean Payton. A lot of things I hate. Somehow, the Bucks are 2-0. and Somehow, the Falcons are 2-0. and uh, Again, sometimes in, this, in the NFL, you just got to find awful sides and play them because that's ultimately what, what catches a lot of time. Uh, Jeff, what's your, uh, your your biggest surprise so far? Is, is it the uh, the Bucks two and zero, being that you did like the uh, season win total under? Um, it's well, I bet the season win total this week at under eight and a half. I just don't think they're going to be able to do this. Baker Mayfield and they being the what was Bears, the what, what was the pro- adjusted price on that? Um, the under, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta look it up, but it was. I got two extra games, it was six and a half to start the season. I just right. don't think they're gonna end up. They're gonna be nine and eight this year. No, Baker I don't know, not at all. That, I don't know. I, I can look up what what price I got for that one, but I like it. The under now, to me, the most surprising thing is not the winning teams, it's the losing teams. The Chargers being zero and two. The don't give me, don't get me started on them. Like it, to, to me, it's it's the teams that are losing more than teams that are winning. Look, the Falcons beat the Packers by one and beat a, a bad Panthers team. The the Bucks beat the Bears, who we just agree aren't very good, and they beat a Vikings team in an upset. The Vikings might not be very good as well. They're also 0-2. And, and the Commanders beat Arizona and the Broncos, like two bad football teams. So the 0-2 teams, to me, guys, are the surprising teams because one of them, if they don't, if whoever loses in Minnesota and, and Chargers this weekend, it's not making the playoffs. Like they're not making the playoffs. And so, you know, if if, if, if the Bengals can't beat the, Ram, the, 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 the Rams this weekend, they're not making the playoffs either. And so it's a big weekend for these 0-2 teams. 
Sammy? To me, yeah. Well, well, I think, well, well I, you started. Will you go? No, I was just going to say, I mean, to me, I know Washington. Washington is just, they've been so bad for two and a half decades. I know they haven't beaten the best teams, but I mean, this has still just been such a dormant franchise to see them 2-0. and That's an impressive win. Like Denver is not an easy place to play, especially early in the season to be down. What was it? 18 points and come back and win and blow up a lot of people's survivors. I mean, so Washington. Yeah, it's strange to see a 2-0 and by their name. I am having uh, this conversation with myself. Should I get more Green Bay stock this weekend? Because I think New Orleans is so phony. They are right, they barely Tennessee who can't score. And then they beat a rookie quarterback on Monday night by three. That game landed three, which was very anticlimactic. Whether you laid three or took three, you're like <laughs> four hours of my life on that. But Laying two on Green Bay, I've already done it. I might do it some more. This Saints team is in for a rude awakening this week, and I think they're going to get blown out in Green Bay. It, it, it's funny. I, w- I don't know if it was this particular group chat that I'm a part of. There was another one that I was a part of. So that might have been that one where someone brought up, has anyone ever made more money or accomplished more out of being more mediocre than Derek Carr? Like it, It's unbelievable. He, yeah, he's just he he just is he's what a guy. he is, and and like you, the Saints knew this, right? Like you're just getting a consistent guy. That's the thing that plays a lot in the NFL, right? Like you know what you're getting with him. You're not getting great, but you're not getting terrible. You're getting right in the middle, which I would argue is the worst place to be in the NFL. In the middle, being nine and eight, eight, eight and nine. But the Saints always want to compete for a playoff spot. They've yet to admit that sort of the roster is aging out a little bit, and they got to find a, a younger solution at quarterback, and they haven't been able to do that yet. But yeah, the, the Saints just can't score a lot of points. And the Packers, I think the Packers should have won that game on Sunday. Uh, they're up 24-12 in the fourth quarter and couldn't close the deal. I'm with Sammy on this one. I think the Packers do roll this weekend. Uh, you, Sammy and Willa, you guys mentioned the, the Bucks and 2-0 and and who they've beaten. Like This game this week, Philadelphia laying four and a half, five in some spots against Tampa. I, I already discussed how I like the Eagles laying the point. Like, there, I know there are very respected people out there that took Tampa plus the points, and maybe that's why it's down to four and a half now. I just don't see it. Like, the best unit on the field is the Eagles defense. Are we really expecting Baker Mayfield and that offense to be able to put up a bunch of points? Now, look, I am not an Eagles guy. I thought the Cowboys would win that division before the year, and certainly the Eagles have looked certainly less potent than they did last year, but I, I don't know. Like, I, love bet, I love betting a terrible team in the NFL. I love taking the contrarian side, but I don't know if I could get behind the the the, the Bucks plus the points here. I, I like Philly. Am I, am I am I crazy, Sam, for like for liking the Eagles here? No, you're not. And that's a nice little snippet that you kind of dropped in there about Dallas to win the East. If you want to read about it, you can go to FoxSports.com. <laughs> Dallas at plus one ten to win the East. There's still that five game gauntlet later this season where Philly goes like Dallas, yep. Kansas, Buffalo. San Francisco, Dallas, and they're not going to survive that. So um, the other thing in this game in Philly, Tampa Bay, is you also have to think about Philly played on Thursday. So this is that extra rest, get all these guys that are nicked up, get them healthy, get them ready to go. And really laying under seven in this spot. Like I would lay five right now. I I haven't really gotten there yet because I'm still trying to get my liquidity in order for Saturday for college football. But I probably should should get a piece of Philly minus five right now because that likely keeps climbing. We know that every straight bet, every money line parlay, all of these parlays are going to roll into Monday, and most of the public is going to use Philly in those plays. So, yeah, I, I think the ten day off is is great for Philly, and you know, yeah, they're lucky to be two and zero, but they're still two and zero. You know, let's not knock them for winning games against the Patriots and the Vikings, two teams that really do different things. The Patriots are really good defensively. The Vikings are really good offensively. Philly has taken a couple punches, but they've still taken care of business. I'm usually not one to think this way. Like, oh, that's a trap line. I just think the line is what it is, and it's that way for a reason. But, Bear, somebody who's bet this or will bet this, don't you feel like this is a little too easy with Philly? Hey, Philly minus four and a half. I I don't know. It just it, it does feel, it does feel a little strange at this low. I don't know. Does it make you uneasy putting this bet in your bet slip? It, it, it does, and it did, especially knowing the people who are on Tampa in this game. But I, I just can't get what I've seen on the field out of my head. Like, speaking of easy, like, like 
what looks easier this week than Miami laying six and a half against Denver, Seattle laying six against Carolina? Like, like you talk about absolute tri- uh, what's it called? the Lions minus three against Atlanta. The, those things all look like trap kind of lines as well. Like this is a tread carefully, I think, kind of week in the NFL, Jeff. Well, I feel like it always is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could be I, I, as evidenced by last week. <laughs> there's nothing that uh, there's, and and remember too to make sure to check the lines throughout the week, right? Because I I on this show I took the Packers money line on Thursday, and then by Saturday by Sunday it was plus three, yeah. right? And so make sure that, 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 that you track these lines because sometimes, as you mentioned, Sammy, and this could be four and a half now for Eagles, and maybe by kickoff it's near six or seven, right? So make sure that you kind of track on the lines as you, as you decide on on where to go. But the NFL is always full of these games. You you look at all these lines, you're like, wait, that doesn't make sense to me. And then a lot of times by Sunday, you're like, oh, it makes a little bit more sense to me. And so, um, but I'm with you on the football part of this. The Eagles are better everywhere. Like where is Tampa Bay better than the Eagles? Like what position, can you give me one position where you're like, you know what, this is the football advantage Tampa Bay has in this game. The answer is nowhere, nowhere. Maybe Mike Evans against the Eagles corners, but you, the Eagles have good core. I can't find a position where they're better than, than, uh, but Tampa Bay is hard to play at in this time of year. It's hotter than usual or, you know, across other places, but I'm with you in the Eagles. I think Eagles w- w- win this game by touchdown. And let's also bear, let's think about what Tampa, did. they faced a bears defense right. that was on backs two and three. One of the corners got hurt in that game. And then the safety got hurt. So it was just bombs away all day against a Bears defense that was on cornerbacks three and four down to safety and has no defensive line. I mean, that was like it was like just shooting fish in a barrel for Baker Mayfield. He had how many passing yards did he have? Three hundred and fifty or something like that. That's not going to happen against Philly because they're going to be guys in his face literally all night on Monday. Yeah, and and you mentioned an injury, an unfortunate injury. We're going to look up on Sunday. It's going to, we're going to see 23-20 Tampa Bay final because that's how this ridiculously <laughs> is. But you mentioned injury, unfortunate injury on Monday night to Nick Chubb, which was awful and terrible for those of us who uh, have a lot of Browns futures and just awful for the league in general to lose uh, one of their best players. But I like the Browns this week laying the three and a half against Tennessee because I still think the Browns defense is, again, this is not going to be Tennessee up against the the – the Chargers defense from last week where they, they allow Tannehill just to throw all over him and complete a ridiculously high percentage of passes. I think you're going to see a little bit more of what you saw against the Saints, uh, a really good defense. So I like the Browns minus three and a half. And it, Will, you got any thoughts on the, uh, on the Browns this week or maybe uh, a way to maybe take advantage of a market where the Browns might be involved in? I think he can even get a three. There's some threes starting to pop up. I think people see the trend. Vrabel as a dog, and he's been great as a dog, straight up against the spread. You name it. Yep. That uh, that combined with the Chubb injury, combined with the fact that Watson really. I mean, he, we, when's the last time we've seen this guy play he's good football? Bad. It's been three or four years. He's looked really bad. But that being said, you know, you, you factor in home field. You're just saying these teams are like a point, point and a half apart. I think that's too much of a, an adjustment. Uh, I like the Browns here. I do think the Browns win. This is an important game for them because you know their schedule, playing in that division, is not going to be. Easy. You go to one and two, you're in some trouble, uh, especially with how well the Ravens are playing. So uh, I do like the Browns here. I think they get back on track. The under, I think, is juicing this game because the Titans' offense is not very good. We talked about that, in the, and Deshaun Watson hasn't played as well, and and no Chubb. The only thing about betting against the Titans, guys, I don't know if you feel this way. I just hate being on the other side of the Titans because of the way they play football, the way they're coached, the way they play defense, they kind of keep ball control and offense. Like I feel like every time I bet against the Titans bear, I just end up like wishing I had taken the other I side. I had them last week. Yeah. got on them late last week, which was good. Titans. Yeah. yeah. Like, did you want to be the Chargers last week? No, no, yeah, exactly. Like I, I like, to be in the Browns. When do you ever want to be on the Chargers? Never. They're the worst. They're, they're just Thank the you. worst to ever wager on. Staley needs to be gone. Get out of here, Staley. I, I I don't know how he I don't know how he kept his job after last year. What he did in that final regular season game against Denver, like the, he cost he arguably cost them the wild card game by playing those guys in a meaningless. It, it's, I, I, people don't care about that. So people <laughs> people just want winners. Sam, you got anything for us? I would be careful first of all with Cincinnati. You know, I got a text on Tuesday, so a handful of days ago, about hey, be careful with Joe Burrow, like. They're floating the letters IR around. And I don't, I don't know that we get there, but this market clearly says that even if Burrow plays this week, he's not right. I mean, the Rams open as a seven and a half point dog, and now we're seeing two and a half, three. 
it's going to bounce around the three until we get to Monday. And of course, we won't learn anything officially until we get to Sunday or Monday. But I would stay far away from the Rams and the Bengals game. And then I don't want to steal your thunder here, Jeff, but Zach Wilson sees ghosts when he faces Bill Belichick. <laughs> Winless starts, two touchdowns, seven picks, 12 sacks, a partridge in a pear tree, all that crap. This guy just can't solve Belichick. And the way that Bill is going to have this thing dialed up, he's going to have this kid running for his life. He's going to put pressure in the pocket. And I know the total is low, but how do you go over 37? I mean, this is a game that's probably – last year these two teams played, it was 3-3 three to three in the fourth quarter. There was a punt return for a t- – That was such an ugly game. Oh, it was awful. Fuck, if it's on TV one, yeah. it's your own – by the way. Uh, the other game I'm, I'm curious that you guys take on is the Chiefs are laying 12 and a half at home against the Bears. And and the Chiefs historically with, with Mahomes have not been the best as double digit home favorites. They tend to not care about these games very much and sort of at the end of games, they, they have a, a dumb penalty, a turnover that ends up allowing a late score and not covering. But the Bears are sort of a wreck right now. Justin Fields is calling out the offensive coordinator. The offense is a wreck. Obviously, their defensive coordinator had to leave yesterday. And the Chiefs' offense has played poorly enough where I feel like this is a game they're going to take more seriously. Do you guys have a thought at all on this? Because I feel like a lot of people are going to try to just lay the 12 and a half with the Chiefs because of the reason I laid out. But they have, they have not been good in this spot in the past. Yeah, not not a habit for me to lay that this many points in the NFL. But if there were a game to do, it would be this one. Remember, Mahomes uh, could have been drafted by the Bears. That not not to rub it in, in the salt in the wounds there, Bears fans, because Mahomes. I don't know if you've seen him, but he's pretty good. Uh, Mitch Trubisky was drafted instead. We'll we'll need some time to see how that works out. But you remember, Mahomes scored a touchdown against the Bears when these teams played. I think it was 2019, and he started doing the thing where he counts his fingers of all the guys picked ahead of him. So you know what? It, how many points are the Bears going to score in this game? The Chiefs. Uh, you figure they've been sluggish on offense, like you mentioned. Maybe this is a get-right game where, look, this game's got 30 to 13 written all over it. So if I had to play it, I would actually lay the points with KC. Uh, see, and I'm yeah, like I'm, talking about I'm... it's the 14, ahead, Bear. I take it if it gets the 14 because I'm a sicko. That's what it is. I'm a sicko. <laughs> Did you know that there's... <laughs> there's only one in the NFL that hasn't won a game since Elon Musk bought Twitter? The Chicago Bears. How about that for trivia? Nice. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm sitting on the the squarest money line parlay of squarest money line parlays, and I am not afraid to admit it. Dallas, San Francisco, and, and Kansas City. So, hopefully, by the what time we're wrong? listening to this, it, it would it would still it'll still be live. Hopefully, the Giants at the time you're listening or watching this did not beat San Francisco on Thursday night. But but yeah, like how, yeah you, you don't want to say how does this lose, but 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 how does this lose? I, I mean, seriously, I mean. The, 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 the Cardinals just continue to find ways to manage the game to lose and the Bears stink and the Giants probably with no Saquon and injuries on that offensive line. But we'll, we'll see what happens uh, later. Some bet you have to be willing to lose. Some, someone has someone said that before. Well, speaking of a bet that you're willing to lose, I know, I know we were talking about uh, on text earlier in the week about a, a, an MVP bet that you um, had liked in, in, the, in, the, in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't a fan. I didn't make any bets on this market before the season. It's just all the numbers were too short. You go back to Mahomes winning 80 to 1 and Lamar winning like 75 to 1. I think the books got spooked and they just shrunk all these numbers. So I stayed away. But I finally saw something this week that I at least thought was interesting. I don't think this is like some great bet that's totally mispriced. But Brock Purdy at 22 to 1, I can at least see a path where this team is maybe 14 and 3. Who knows? 15 and 2. Um, and, and if you've got a quarterback, look, we know it's a quarterback award. We know it's a quarterback of a team that's going to win double digit games. If you have a quarterback of like a 14 and through 15, 14 and three or 15 and two team, he's going to have a chance. And the narrative is there. He was uh, on the last pick of the draft, Mr. Irrelevant. Uh, he's won all these games. If he gets to 15 and two, I mean, he's going to be sitting there with a very gaudy record. He doesn't have the huge stats in terms of passing yards, but he's clean in terms of INTs. He's clean in terms of losses. And he's got a good offensive play caller. He, in terms of Shanahan, he's got all the weapons under the sun and you can just start looking at these other guys Mahomes maybe there's some voter fatigue he has diminished weapons this year Allen already has a four turnover game on Monday night you know Herbert's 0-2 Burrow's hurt Lamar and two are injury prone I could see a path where two where, where Purdy is at least like we look up in December and he's four to one six to one eight to one something like that so I just think at 22 to one there's a path 
there and at, at that long of a price, that's all you're really looking for. So I think Purdy's got a, a legitimate shot at MVP. I think he's a legitimate player. I think we're, we're past the point where he's just a good story. I think he's a really good player. I think this is real. You got you got a, you got a shake of the head over here. I looked out of the corner of my eye from uh, from the old tackle over here with with, with, the, with that wager. I mean, if the Niners win the NFC, the MVP is Brock Purdy, right? I mean, no one else on the team will be MVP, and that, you're McCaffrey? basically betting on that, right? They're the best team in the NFC. Could it be McCaffrey? Be per- I don't think so. I mean, it's hard to win the MVP when you only play twelve I mean, games, bit. Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think he'll get the numbers to to be the MVP. I mean, you have to rush for two thousand yards and have an historic season to right. be the MVP at running back historically, and so that's Always not going to happen too. with all the weapons they have. And 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 you get hurt a couple games, or you know they've talked about limiting his workload as well, which didn't happen in week one. But I think we'll start seeing his workload be limited, especially like if they're you know in and we're recording this on Thursday. If they're a big tonight, they'll take him out of the game. Like there's no reason to play him in the fourth right. quarter, so he won't get the numbers. And Purdy will play obviously the, the the entire game. And if they win, the story of him as well. It's a good wager. I'm, we also, I'm just looking down the skit. Go go, ahead, Sammy. Go go. Can we finally cut the crap on this Dan Campbell coach of the year? Like, how do you win coach of the year when you're not a good coach? (laughs) Not even a good coach. Mike McDaniel, much better coach. Arthur Smith, much better coach. Like, after they beat the Chiefs, we were basically handing him the coach of the year trophy. He's not even a good coach. Can we cut it, please? Matt Nagy won this award, though. Keep that in mind, too. (laughs) <laughs> it, it, it's so funny though because i'm sitting here thinking it about everything and you brought up mike mcdaniel like are the dolphins just like the, not the biggest winner of everything that's happened so far yeah. early in this season with with the bills going down uh, to, to the jets and then uh, the chub injury and burrow being her like everything around teams like the dolphins that in theory would be competing Rogers with being wild card or in the division yeah it, it, it it's amazing how everything's kind of broken right for the dolphins and, and we always have to use the uh, if Tua stays healthy, but that offense looks looks really good, and it, it's an interesting game on Sunday against a, a desperate Broncos team that, it, again, it would be perfect NFL for the Broncos to have blown that 21-3 lead, go on the road to South Florida, and, and compete, and maybe even pull an upset against Miami. But I'm, I'm, I'm just going on the schedule. Is there a game ever on the schedule that is le- that is less desirable to bet than Chargers Vikings. Ugh. I mean, what? I mean, just, just flip a coin. I, I, who in the who in their right mind would want to wager on that game? What what kind of possible edge did you find in that game, Will? Well, uh, you didn't say how you had to bet it. You could bet a total because I think both these offenses are really good. It's good conditions. You're playing indoors, and who's going to stop anybody? So I look at it over, and you could bet teasers too. Who, uh, and this line keeps back and going back and forth between one, one and a half. Pick them and again shop around. But if you can get a one and a half, I'm more than happy to tease the dog up to plus seven and a half because for the same reason you're thinking. This is really? close late. It's going to be yeah. I mean, look, I, I just do you I, think I, so? I don't see either one of these teams pulling away. So, well, who do you? I don't think I don't. No result in this game would surprise me. If, if a team won by either either team won by double digits, it wouldn't shock me. Not the Chargers okay. play zero close. The Chargers I, 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 can't I, I, play a close I, I, game. It's in it's in the rule book. <laughs> or not play a close. I feel game. like anytime you can play. fade. I feel like when you, anytime you can fade Brandon Staley on the road, you just do so. Like if you're defaulting to a wager in this game, you just say, hey, I'm, I'm going to take a coach who can't get it right um, versus you know, the Vikings problem is not their coaching staff. It's it Cousins obviously being very up and down. And so to me, you just say, hey, guys, if, you're, if you want to wager in this game, you fade the bad coach. That That's my opinion. And, and then I'm looking, at, I'm looking at Sunday night, Pittsburgh, Vegas, Vegas minus two and a half. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm surprised to see. Vegas favored, uh, even with Pittsburgh's offensive struggles, like their deep, like total of forty three. It total seems kind of high, doesn't it? Sammy and I counted touchdowns that have been scored by the offenses in in this of uh, these two teams through four games each, run two and two. What's it at, Sammy? We're like at five offensive to touch, four offensive to touchdowns combined for the three teams. I mean, yeah, the under to me feels like the play here. Um, but Tomlin again as a dog is really good. I, that's kind of if you're looking for a wager in this game. Don't need to fall to Steelers just being good as dogs, but the touchdowns have been hard to come by for both offenses. Another good teaser leg with Pittsburgh. Sammy, eight and a half. That should be 23 20, somebody, I would think. Yeah, I was actually just going to say that. That's a great teaser spot. I mean, you could go Seattle down from six to pick them with Pittsburgh from two and a half to eight and a half. Um, you, know, you could 
if you really wanted to get crazy, you could take Jacksonville. Actually, that's at nine now, so let's let's not wong that one. So, yeah, I mean, if I was looking for a teaser this week, I don't want to take two and a half pair with Pittsburgh, but I would gladly take eight and a half and, and find a favorite like maybe Baltimore or Seattle, tease them through the seven and the three. Um, I, I definitely want the full protection on eight and a half with Pittsburgh because, as Jeff said, they have two, two offensive touchdowns this year. Two. <laughs> You mentioned T's in Seattle down there playing Carolina. Like there are those markets available, like last winless team, last team to lose. Like are are the like everyone just kind of agree is in agreement? I think that Arizona is the team that probably will be the last team to, to win a game. But are, are the Panthers live there in this market? You think will? I mean, I looked at this market. I, I think still the boring answer, like you said, the boring answer is the correct answer with with Arizona because they could look. They could easily be two and zero. They are two and zero against the spread. But hey, now it gets real where you start to play the Cowboys, the Forty ers the Bengals. That you get Browns, Ravens. It's a really tough stretch. There's a reasonable uh, scenario where they're winless when they play Houston. I think middle of November because the schedule is very difficult, and that those are two winnable games that are are no longer on the board. So I actually played uh, more Arizona under three and a half wins. I just don't see any scenario they get to four. Um, and, and the more you lose, I think it's a self-fulfilling pros- prophecy where the more you lose, the more you keep losing. Maybe you trade some guys, you know, the direction of the team is it, it becomes more you know, of a tank if that's possible, blowing a 28-7 lead to the Giants. So I understand you know, you're looking for a bang for your buck with Carolina, but I still think Arizona plus money, I think it's plus 150. That's probably the best bet, I, I, I still think. Oh, this too, I mean, losing is contagious. I don't know if they're right. going to have the way to put it. But what about Chicago? I mean, the, everybody's already turning on the coaching staff of Chicago after two games. And let's also remember that they have potentially two top five picks next year. You might as well just go to the bottom. I mean, if they, they suck, you might as well just suck the most. Absolutely. I mean, what if they could pick second and third next year in the draft? Because they have Carolina's pick. So, I mean, if, if it's not going to work with Justin Fields, you might as well go to the bottom. And maybe that Bears team only wins three or four games again. They, they the only, it's a good angle. I bet them worst record before Arizona started this tank. The only concern would be if I'm Eberflus, hey, I'm setting up somebody else for a draft because if I'm at the bottom, I'm not coaching the team next year. So maybe you know, maybe they replace the coach and, and somebody else is, is tanking, but that would be my concern where the, the coach is at least trying to win. Okay. The coaches are always trying to win on Sunday. So we're right, talking about exactly. as many times over tanking. But the Bears can't win. Like it doesn't it, the thing about it is they might try to win. But what has shown you they can win? Right now, their they're, they're quarterback has an open rebellion against his coaching staff. He's going public with this because he's tried to do this privately, and they haven't taken the hint. But I understand the coaching staff saying, look, man, we want to run an offense that doesn't have to feature your legs because that keeps you healthier. And over the long run, that's an offense that typically functions year over year with more wins. However, if Fields is not comfortable, you got to tailor something to what Fields can do best. And not only that, have you watched the offense? Guys run the same routes. There's times where guys aren't even running routes. Like, it's discombobulated anyway. So whatever they're doing is not working, whether you run Fields' offense or someone else's offense. They're like open rebellion. He's out in the media telling, hey, man, this offense isn't for me. It's too overcomplicated. I, I don't I don't, like, I don't like running this offense. That's not going to change. Now they've had all the months to install this offense. We're going to make it simpler. Simpler typically doesn't equal wins in the NFL. And so I, I really don't think even if they try to win guys – they're going to win a lot of football games. But in terms of immediate schedule, I'm just looking at it now. They After this week, it's Commanders, Broncos, Vikings, Raiders. They could maybe steal one of those. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to need to be the last team that's that's winless, you're going to need to go for a little bit here, and they could probably sneak one of those games out, I would think. All right. Speaking of winless, I'm going to try to avoid being winless this week after a terrible, terrible run. Last week in the column, I appreciate your input as always. Will, Sammy, Jeff will do it again next week. Time for our weekly survivor segment. And I will admit I've weeded through some entries in my survivor so far because I tried to go against the obvious popular pick and uh, did not work well last week for me with Denver. I still got one left. And I, I did use Buffalo in the uh, circuit survivor. So I'm still alive in circuit okay. survivor. But the other ones... But I worry that I had multiple left. I split between Buffalo and Denver. So uh, the, the entries are getting weeded out quicker than usual. But, hey, they're still alive. So th- this week, the two games that I would tread carefully on are Seattle and Miami. We all have seen yeah. how bad Carolina is. 
how they have no wide receiver play, how their offensive line is bad. Uh, Bryce Young has struggled like you would expect a rookie quarterback to struggle. But now you're going on the road. Seattle's already lost to the Rams up there. They're, 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 that defense still has issue. Gave up a bunch of yards and points to the Lions last week. So I'd be careful with Seattle, and I'd be careful with Miami as well. Miami coming home after winning a divisional road game to, to start the year, winning in L.A. To, to start the year. Now you go home against an 0-2 Denver team that does not look to be any improved from last year, but wouldn't it be just like a Russell Wilson and Sean Payton to go on the road there and, and, and you find yourself in a 23-20 in a game in the fourth quarter and you're holding off with your life? It's very NFL for the Broncos to win this game in Miami, isn't it? Like, this is a, the classic NFL week three, kind of a desperate team on the road. Even Carolina, I've been 0 2 a couple of years, man. That game three, like, you, you know the stats as a player. You know, if you go 0 3, you're not making the playoffs. Um, and there's a desperation level. And the Broncos, as you know, Russell Wilson redemption in week three against a, a feel good Dolphins team, I, it feels very. NFL-ish for that to be a loss for for the Dolphins. Yes, I'd, I'd be careful with those two right around a touchdown favorites if you're looking to be a little different in terms of avoiding those popular picks this week. I think the Lions are kind of like the risk reward pick. Like I don't get it with Atlanta. I don't think Desmond, I don't think Desmond Ritter is the long term answer. Uh, obviously, the Lions have some injuries of their own to be concerned about. But coming off of the loss last week at home uh, to Seattle, like. I think obviously there's some risk here because, because people, this number has come down quite a bit. So there are people out there that are betting Atlanta. So I don't see it. I, I think if you if you have if you have multiple entries and you're looking to avoid popular picks, I think the Lions might be might be a team that might be worthwhile taking a chance with. I keep wagering against the Falcons. And I keep winning. <laughs> so like I don't know. I don't know what, what do you know? Do. I don't know. What do. The Falcons just keep just keep doing it. The one the one team for me that I think is kind of interesting is the Packers. They're hosting the Saints here. Um, we talked a little bit in the gamble group chat about the Saints, right? Like, is this a spot to take the Packers on a kind of a 50-50 game, sort of get them, get them in there, get a win? No one's probably taking the Packers this weekend as well. Right. Is it a good spot to take Green Bay here? I I, I love anything that is kind of against the popular pick of the week. Because you don't want to be on board when a third of the pool gets wiped out. That being said, it's hard not to use can You can use the Chiefs any week. But after having a couple of entries bounced early on, I feel like I'm in a spot where I want like a no sweat kind of yes. week. And the Chiefs are zero percent chance of losing at home. Correct. So I ultimately landed on Kansas City. Okay. Not creative, but I think Jeff's got a good point with Green Bay. I think the Lions are someone to consider as well. If you obviously don't want to use Dallas, Jacksonville, yeah, I mean, Baltimore, Kansas City. If you're in a smaller pool like I am, that not not the circle pool, not paying thousands of dollars, you know, throw the, the Packers in there. But I get your point. If you're if you're kind of down to a couple entries left and you've spent a lot of money on it, Kansas City is is not a sweat. And hopefully we don't sweat out your three bets so far you've given on our show. Get to our best bet in a second. Let, let's recap what Bear's done so far on the NFL show. Uh, Browns are at home against the Titans. You have the Browns minus three and a half. The Bills are at the Commanders. The Commanders are plus six and a half here. Maybe looking to go three and oh as a, as a money line favorite here as well. Eagles on the road at Tampa Bay. Eagles laying the four and a half here. That came open at seven. Now Eagles minus four and a half. Might be some buyback at some point, but Bear got a good number here. Let's get to your best bet. We're kind of on the same wavelength here yeah. for, for our best bets this weekend. Yeah, I'm on the Jets team total under 17 and a half. And like, would it surprise me if the Jets won this game 16 to 13? No, it wouldn't, which is why I'm not going to take New England. Uh, I think what your point about the under is obviously good. But uh, the one thing I'm sure about is that the Jets offense is going to continue to struggle all year long. Without Zach Wilson, somehow Priest Hall only got four carries in the last game. So we'll see if they change their offensive game plan at all. But We've seen Zach Wilson against the Patriots defense. It hasn't been good. It's not going to be any better this week. It's not going to be any better the rest of the year. So I'm sorry, Barry. You sound sad. I'm sorry. Buddy. I'm very sad because they were an absolute contender this year. Yeah, especially with the way that the, the AFC has sort of gone they so were far. They weren't contender this year. It's okay. We'll, I'm sorry, buddy. Wait, 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 wait till next year. Thank you. But Jets under 17 and a half team total against that. Well, my best bet falls on the same line. We, we don't talk about this before the show that much, but we're kind of on the same wager. I have uh, New England and the Jets under 37 here. Bear mentioned it. Sammy P mentioned it earlier. Zach Wilson in four games against the Patriots, 0-4. 
They've scored six, 13, 17, and three. Two touchdowns, seven interceptions. Um, they're not going to play well. But on the flip side, the Patriots' offense is just not good. No. There's no wide receivers that, 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 that are capable of being good enough for Mac Jones to throw the ball up to. Mac Jones completes no passes that are over 10 yards. Like, there's just no offense. They're not running the ball terribly well. The thing about defense, when you watch a Jets defense play against the Cowboys, they play well until they don't because the offense doesn't help them at all. Like defense plays well until they don't because they don't trust the offense. They get tired. They get emotional, things like that. In this game, the Jets defense will enter the game knowing we have to play well to win the game. And we can do it against a team like this. So I know the total is low. I'm sure there's some, some dumb trend about the total being 37 and always taking the over. I don't care. This game is going to be 13-10, 17-10. Guys, 2017, I get a push. It's a lot of points in this game. So give me the give me the under here of 37 in New England and and uh and, and the New York Jets. Let's get to our super six here for the week. It's not too late to play the free Fox Super Six game for week three. You can download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to enter, excuse me, a chance to win your share of ten thousand dollars and we can cash prize. We got six questions here, Bear. We're going to go through them together this week. Make a little change. I like this. Doing this as a a group here. Okay, question number one here. What will be the outcome of this game? I can't believe this game is on here. You have to to pick. This is your pick right here. Chargers to win by two points or more, or the Vikings to win or lose by one point. You have to make this wager. I'm making you do this. Yeah, this is just a... A sadistic game. I mean, whoever put this this list together just uh, must must have known my disdain for both of these teams. Like, yeah, look, this is not as I mentioned in the group chat. Like, this is a game I'd want absolutely no part of. They're both completely untrustworthy. No result would surprise me. But I'm just so tired of the Chargers that I'm just going to hate pick the Vikings because I'm tired. It. I'm tired of the people. Oh, the Chargers and all that talent and the analytical genius, uh, Brandon Staley. Yeah, okay, sure. Give me, give, give me the Vikings on a hate pick. I love, oh, hate picks are the best. I love it so much. All right, question number two: Which running back will have the most rushing yards? Bijan Robinson, Tony Pollard, Travis Etienne, or Jameer Gibbs? I'm going with. I got to rank these one through four here. I'm going Tony Pollard first. Cowboys running back at Arizona. Excuse me, I think they host Arizona, actually. Yes. They're, they're going to have a lot no, of No, 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 no. Dallas had Arizona. Dallas had but Arizona. But it'll be a home game it doesn't, for Dallas. It doesn't, yeah, Dallas home game. They're going to rush for a lot of yards. They'll just get the ball a lot in this game, I feel like. I have Bijan Robinson second. I know Bijan's been fantastic this season. Um, but they also they kind of split carries there every now and then. It, it, it might get to a game where they have to pass the ball if the Lions can score a bunch of points. I got ETN uh, third here uh, against Houston. I have Jameer Gibbs uh, fourth as the Lions. He's not got a lot of carries this year. They, they play Atlanta as well. Our right, question number three. Bear, this one's yours here. Or the quarterbacks by who will have the most passing yards <laughs> from highest to lowest. Okay. Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert, and Kirk Cousins. Again, they're getting the Vikings, the Vikings Chargers game. They're making this easy for me this week. We'll go uh Cousins, Herbert, Mahomes, Prescott. Like I, I don't trust the Chargers defense as far as I can throw it. Herbert. We've seen we, we've seen Tua and yeah. Ryan Tannehill pick them apart. Now you've got the Chargers trying to figure out a way to Slow down Kirk Cousins and those wide receivers. Good luck. So I think Herbert will have a big game as well against the bad Vikings defense. Mahomes, they might just get up and start running the ball. Who knows? And you'd be running the football. That'd be a first. Yeah. And then and then and then and then Dak <laughs> Prescott. I think we've seen yeah. the Dallas offense kind of evolve a little bit where they're becoming a little bit more of a lower risk type of offense. Yeah. But I think Cousins and Herbert, one of those has to be the top pick. I'll go Cousins. Next up, question number four, which team will score the most points? The Green Bay Packers, the Chargers, the Jaguars, the Vikings. I'm sort of with you, how you took Cousins at the top of this. I have Minnesota scoring the most points this weekend against the Chargers defense that allowed Ryan Tannehill to score on a speed option. Never touched the Chargers defense. They allowed 36 points against the Dolphins. So Minnesota won. Jacksonville versus Houston. Have Jacksonville. They've only scored 20 points a game. They have not scored a lot of points. I think this it opens up this weekend for them. Chargers number three. Packers playing a really good Saints defense. I have them number four here uh, in my order of, of, more, of most points. Uh, question number five here for you, Bear. Order the receivers by who will have the most receiving yards from highest to lowest. You have Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, CeeDee Lamb, and Travis Kelsey. This is like stacking my fantasy team yes. this week. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Jefferson, Kelsey, Hill, Lamb. Um, again, I'm all in on the Vikings. 
but but I do think there is something to all these rumblings about the Chiefs' offense and no weapons and no not efficient and, and everything. This could be a week where Kelsey now a week yeah. healthier from he was in the preseason. I think he could have a big game. So I'm going to go Kelsey second behind Jefferson. Who I think we'll have a massive game this week. The final question of the Super Six. Remember, you can win ten thousand dollars here. What will be the outcome of this game? The Bears win or lose by 12 points or fewer. The Chiefs win by 13 points or more. It's a 15 point here. I'm taking Kansas City. Of course I am. Of course you are. Kansas City here. You have to take Kansas City. You can't take the Bears here. You just Feels can't like do a 17 Bears Dude, kind of win. We, which you, which, no, you, no. which we, is the tiebreaker. Were, were, were you looking at my notes? No, I have it written right here in my note. Look who my tiebreaker is. <laughs> That's great. 38 yeah. 27. Yeah. We both tiebreaker. Have the same, 38 Look at that. So, so you know it absolutely will not be 30. Actually, <laughs> actually we're going to see like, like the, the FanDuel or DraftKings, all those apps. Like, what will the, predict yeah. the final score? Like, 38-17 is going to get steamed down I to know. Well, like we, some ridiculous we, low odds now. So we both have the tiebreaker of 38-17, guys. Um, so, yeah, look at us. We're on the same page. I love it. There was a Super 6. I was going to say, that, that was... If it, if it, I might have to play 38-17 just for fun. We should do that, yeah. We should. I'll find a way to do that. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do that. Hopefully it will. Uh, hey, we we deserve it after last week. We do deserve it. Yes. Deserve it yeah. It was, a, it was a rough NFL week. But hopefully this NFL week will be uh, be much better. Appreciate you tuning in again to Bear Bets, the NFL version. Thanks again for all of your downloads, your comments, your feedback, uh, your ratings, your subscriptions, all of the above. I hope everybody has a great week four week three in the NFL. Yes. I'm getting ahead of my getting ahead of myself. Week four in college, week three in the NFL. Sammy P, for Will Hill, Jeff, I'm the Bear. Remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.